And here's Dave Malicki. Well, Mark McGuire. Oh, boy. That's a home run. That's the 37th ballpark he's homered in. Malicki. Mike Matheny, another base hit up the middle by Polanco. Edgar Renteria singles to left. Matheny scores. Pol Polanco goes to second. It's now 4 0. And you can guess a lot of trouble. Jim Edmonds, I think we know where this one's going. 7 0. 18 homers for Jim Edmonds. Makes life very good for Pat Hankin. And a season where no lead is safe. It looks like this lead would be safe, and Pat Hankin is cruising along. Nasty there against Rich Becker. Got a no hitter going off of the bat. Finds the hole. That's about the only thing that did find the hole for Tigers on this one. And he struck him out. That's on Robert Fick. A no hitter through six. And here, the rip. And there's the base hit this time. Bobby Higginson in the seventh inning with one out. So six and a third of no hit baseball for Pat Hankin. Who is 9 0 against the Tigers since 1996? Here, Vic with the drive. Later, Henkin, in his hometown of Detroit, does it again. Cards into the 10 at bats. He struck out, but James Baldwin on the hill and in command, Peter. Well, working very quickly, throwing strikes just to get into a jam in the six. He's up 3 2 with first and second no outs because Willie Breen looking. Gets Glenn Allen Hill looking. Gets Henry Rodriguez to fly out. So he keeps his 3-2 lead. And then right after that, it looked like he was going to have a blowout here. At bottom of the six, Sox up 3-2. Ray Durham against Ishmael Valdez. And he got a nice piece of this. Good one on that. Ray Durham, two for four, his ninth home run of the year. White Sox up 4-2. Yes, put it on the board. Next man up, Jose Valentin. Shortstop with the big days. Watching this one as well. He was three for five, second set of back-to-back -back home runs on the day for that Chicago team, and the White Sox fans said, oh, I'll get rid of him right now. Cubs, though, would come back. Here's Sammy Sosa. The runners on first and second, down by two. That's doing the damage. Warren will score. Terrence will score. A double for Sammy Sosa is one hit of the game, but it's a big one. Ties the game at five. Top of the ninth, still 5-5. Five, five. Bases loaded, one out. Chad Myers, oh, look at it, just enough, and it's slow enough. Back to first, not in time. Well, Myers running for his life on that. <laughs> Don Baylor looking on. That scores a run. Up they go by one, two outs. The big hurt, not deep enough. And the Cubs come back to win it. Sosa with the two RBIs. White Sox win the series, but the Cubs are spared humiliation. Todd Van Poppel, a perfect two and a third. He gets the win in relief. Sammy with the emotional weekend. I've never been in that situation. I think if it would have been maybe another player maybe would be worse but for me you know like I say I, I just uh, don't think like you know I know a lot of things was going on up there but it's not gonna stop me you know it's not gonna stop me I just gotta keep it grind I just gotta keep in playing my game because you know if I'm listening to it's gonna be worse a couple bullpen very solid I mentioned Van Poppel Felix Heredia was in there Rick Aguilera picked up his 14th save Aguilera four blown saves this year look at the ERA early 7.67 that's before may 25th since then a stellar era of 1.18 all right pokey reese said the reds are dead in the dugout indians going for the sweep 400 consecutive sellouts at jacobs field for the indians here in the first ron valone to david justice diving grab there dimitri young and a double play ends the inning bottom of the third two nothing tribe richie sexton big man rips that and a third, Aaron Boone, Pokey Reese, double play, sweet. Run scores, 3-0 Indians. Bottom of the seventh, 4-0 Indians. Travis Fryman sends this to right center. And there's Ken Griffey Jr., nice extension. Well, it is. Except, boy, you know, the way he landed, you thought, uh-oh, is he going to get hurt here? But he has such incredible body control, he keeps himself from getting hurt. Most of us normal human beings would have injured ourselves. Near mortals. Yeah, an outstanding grab here. Elmer Dressens, two. Richie Sexton. Sexton, two for six. That's going out. Five, nothing. Cleveland on their way to the sweep. But here in the eighth, it's 5-2. Pokey Reese running this one out. Rope, up. Beat the throw. It's a huge play in the game, Brian. Pokey. But this is a double play ball. Look how hard he runs it all the way. Just beats it and allows the rally to keep going. Yeah, we saw Chad Myers and Pokey Reese. It's the little things that mean a lot. Sometimes it's the big things that mean a lot. Ken Griffey Jr., daddy's home. Three-run shot. Ties it up 5-5. Again, they were down 5-0 here in the bottom of the eighth. 
Omar Vizquel, runners on the corners, to first to the plate. They get the runner, no run scored, so it's still 5-5. Five, five. Bottom of the 10th, 5-5. Five, five. Danny Graves pitching to Jim Tomey. Tomey rockets this one. Other way, Chris Steins going back into the seats. No, not quite. Steins with the grab. Now here in the bottom of the 10th, Omar Vizquel, another chance. Bases loaded, one out, oh no. Back up to the plate, back to first. Vizquel with one to forget, 0 for 7, left 11 men on base. Terrific. Then Aaron Boone, bases loaded in the top of the 13th, doing the major damage. Stroll on in. One run will score. There's the time. There's the winning run. There's another go-ahead run. Boone two for five. Reds in 13 to avoid the sweep. Ken Griffey Jr. coming in, hitting 228. Three second basemen, by the way, are slugging better than he is, but he's still coming through to help win games. That three-run shot and 11 of his 18 home runs have tied games or put the Reds ahead. Even though, you know, Chuck Finley was throwing a one-hitter until the eighth inning, um, and it's just one of those things where we just stay positive, stay positive, just scratch and claw, and it's nice because we have a five-hour flight to San Francisco, and, you know, at least we can hold our heads up high and smile that we took one. Well, Peter, let's talk bullpen. There's just one man in baseball with no blown saves in this whole league among those with at least six saves, and that's Danny Graves. He's nine for nine. Well, the Reds bullpen has absolutely been sensational. I mean, they've got 14 out of their 32 wins. Williams is on a pace to throw 127 innings. Graves, 114 innings. Scott Sullivan to be over 100 innings for the third consecutive year. And they hope to have Mark Wohlers getting up here in another week or so. But that bullpen has held them together today. I mean, they only had two base runners going into the eighth inning. They survived that, and then the bullpen won it for them. This is the thing. If they can keep them from being overtaxed, they really need Pete Harnish back. They really need Vallone to pitch a little bit better, although he's, he pitched better today. If they can get enough innings out of their starters, they will be contending all year long because they're going to win those games from the seventh inning on. That's a pretty good series. We move on now. This is a good series as well. Red Sox trying to avoid the sweep in Atlanta. Both Sox game and a half behind the Yankees going in. Need this one. And here, Tom Glavin facing Nomar Garcia Parr. The man on first rips that into the gap. Jose Offerman getting a third base, and he keeps on going. Offerman just off the DL, and in he goes. Nice, oh, beautiful slide by Offerman. The one nothing Boston here. Andrew Jones against Ramon Martinez, the grounder. Oh, Nomar. Wow. Range. Nomar making that play. Bottom of the fifth. Two nothing here. Rafael Furcal with two outs. And then Jeff Fry leaps and throws. Fry's seventh and eight assists on ground ball outs. He had five in a row at one point in the game. And here. Gilvio Veras, one out, and the base is loaded. Nomar jumped. It would have been a double play ball. Instead, it's a 2-1 game. becomes a 2-2 game. Then, Rudy Sienez in the eighth, tied up. Jose Offerman, deep into the gap. You think he was going all the way on this, Peter? Oh, I thought so, and I'll tell you, you know, he was not hitting before he got injured. Once Offerman came oh. back, he showed how vital he is to this offense. Just run around the bases. Andrew Jones kicked the ball off the fence. Wins the game for him. That Jones boot was a pivotal play, and Offerman one up bottom of the second tied at one nobody out will Clark facing Andy Ashby Clark third career home run in 10 at bats against Ashby first home run though in 114 at bats this year Mike Messina Pat Burrell got the rookie Messina goes eight gives up five hits at six K's top of the fifth Kevin Jordan other way on Messina Albert Bell is out there up and throwing Albert defensively double play Mike Messina off the a horrific start earlier this year. Back to his usual splendid form. He's unbeaten in four starts. And over his last five starts, he's allowed two runs or less. Messina now up to four and six. Batting practice as a Seattle Mariner, Ricky Henderson noticed John Olerud wearing a batting helmet, sparking this exchange. What's with the helmet? I wear it all the time, said Olerud. Said Ricky, I'll be damned. I used to play with a guy in New York that did the same thing. Said Olerud, that was me. Ricky also played with Olerud in Toronto in 93. <laughs> Ricky, and the man to your right is Mike Cameron. That's Tom Lanthan. 2-2 game, top of the six. Takes Levon Hernandez. The other way, it's John Mabry. Base hit, Tom Lampkin waved home. And Lampkin out at the plate. Bonds throw, keeps the game tied at two. Top of the eighth, now 6-2, A-Rod at the plate. Base hit, Ricky Henderson, come on down, introduce himself to the plate. And the Mariners roll 9-2, so A-Rod doubled twice, singled, and drove in three runs. More than enough support for Aaron Celia, who won his fifth straight decision. A-Rod reached base in 10 of 15 plate appearances over the weekend, which the Mariners took two games to one. It's just the second interleague series Seattle has ever won in a National League ballpark.
Rangers and Rockies, and Jeffrey Hammonds loves playing for Colorado. Pitch. Bases loaded, Rockies down 8-5. Tim Crabtree's pitch ends up in the left field corner. Larry Walker will score. Jeff Cirillo comes around to score. Hammonds a double. Rockies within 1-8-7. Later, Tom Goodwin up with the bases loaded. Lines the pitch to center. Todd Helton will score. Here comes Jeffrey Hammonds. Here comes Gabe Kapler's Aaron throw. And the Rockies come back to win 9-8. Thus, they celebrate purple uniforms and the broom. That's four in a row for Colorado. Conversely, that's five straight losses for the Rangers. Hammonds now has an 11-game hitting streak. By the way, Tom Goodwin committed his first error in 123 games on Sunday. His last error came when he played for the Rangers, of course, in May of 99. Back to Hammonds for a minute. We really believe he likes playing at Coors. He has a 461 batting average there, 11 homers and 40 RBI in just 23 lifetime games. That batting average, by the way, at Coors, second all-time to none other than the previous mentioned John Mabry. The Angels led the Diamondbacks 2-1 to in the bottom of the seventh when Greg Colburn got it. Off of Scott Schoenweiss, fourth home of the year, ties the game at two. The very next batter, Danny Bautista, freshly acquired from Florida just Friday. He's a factor. Going the other way, back-to-back -back jobs, suddenly puts Arizona up one. And Bautista's first homer of the year. Top of the ninth, that's your score. Young Hung Kim blows away Ben Molina and the game. Kim struck out five of the six batters he faced in the Diamondbacks win three to two. Two swings the bat. Instead of losing two of three, Arizona takes two of three from, ba uh, from Anaheim. Said Bautista, wow, it felt wonderful. The Diamondbacks now head out on a seven-game roadie to face the two teams chasing them. Four games at L.A., then three at Colorado. 88 World Series, A's and Dodgers. Eric Gagne Delivered. against Eric Chavez. Eric Chavez wins the Battle of the Erics. Base hit to left, Matt Stairs scores. Miguel Tejada will also tally. A's up 5-0. But Kevin Apier on the mound facing Kevin Elster. Two, two, Flail. Apier would shut down the Dodgers. He had six strikeouts. Top of the fifth, same score. Gagne facing Sal Fasano with men at the corners. Ben Grief takes off for second. Jason Jombie takes off from third. Delayed double steal. Jombie's in there. Everyone's safe. A's win at 6 0. Kevin Apier, a shutout in his first game at Chavez Ravine and his first major league hit to boot. Tied at one between the Astros and the Padres. Jose Lima tries to bunt. Ryan Klesko drops the ball, recovers, manages to turn the double play. Sneaky. Still tied at one. Bottom of the eighth, Padres lead 2 1. Bases loaded. Carlos Hernandez to left. That's a two run single. Corey DeHaan and Phil Nevin will score. Padres go up 4-1, and they go on to win by that score, 4-1. That is nine straight losses for Lima, but... Jays, A. Eh? Montreal up 2-0 in the second one. Carlos Delgado. Delgado. 24th home run of the year. It's a 2-1 ball game. Bottom of the eighth, Expos go to the bullpen. Felipe Lira coming in with the bases full of Jays. Tony Batista busts out the whoop and stick. Cold cuts for everybody. Grand salami time, his 14th home run of the year. Jays go on and win 8-3, to three, taking 2-3 two of three from Montreal. Edson Royals, top of the ninth, Kansas leading 5-4. Brian Giles at the plate. The tying run on base, and Giles, who came in in a mini slump, doubles into center field over Carlos Beltran's head. The throw to home, here it comes. Adrian Brown is in there. We go to extra innings. For the 10th, two runners on for Warren Morris. Warren Morris just ate up this series. Doubles off Jerry Spradlin, Abraham Nunez, and Mike Benjamin score. Pirates go up 7-5. Morris on the day, four for six with two RBI, but that's just part of his series-long trend as the Pirates win it 10-6. Morris might just always want to play the Royals. In this series, 11 of Tampa Bay. Bottom of the sixth, Gerald Williams at the plate. Hammers the ball to left center, Mark Kotze. Nice diving grab. Bottom of the seventh, one on, nobody out. Game tied at four. Bubba Trammell. Hits one deep and gone. Two run shot, sixth of the year. Devil Rays up 6 4. Top of the ninth, two on. Two out for the Marlins. Roberto Hernandez facing Mike Lowell, swinging to wrap it up. The Devil Rays hang on to win 7 6. Scoring four times in three and two thirds on Florida Southpaw starter Jesus Sanchez. Tampa Bay had tied a modern major league record by losing their first 11 games against lefty starters this season. To add injury to insult for Florida, Cliff Floyd sprained his left knee in the ninth. He'll have an MRI in South Florida. Brewers and Twins, top of the first, Brad Radke on the hill, Marquise Grissom at the plate, Advantage Grissom. Two-run homer to deep left center, that's his second homer in two games.
Brewers are up 2-0. A lot of twos. Bottom of the ninth. Twins down 5-3. Sacks juiced. Matt LaCroix at the plate. Rounds one to Jose Hernandez at third. Throws home for one out. Raul Casanova throws to first to complete the 5-2-3 double play. Game O-V-E-R. Brewers win at 5-3. John Snyder snaps an eight-game losing streak. He hadn't won in his last 12 starts.